I do some trainings uh, in regards of operational security, security, online security for journalists and NGOs. And one of the things that I came up with in this week uh, um, of my, my experiences is that um, if you do a training for, for example, journalists, you know the, the most classical example is Greenwald, who doesn't know how to use PGP. Uh, and the problem is, this is absolutely 100% true. I've met journalists who were unable to remember their passwords for longer than one minute. So um, they generated PGP keys, five, within half an hour because they were unable to access the PGP key because they had forgotten the, uh, the password to them. Um, five times in a row. Yes, five times in a row. Um, so it's really, really difficult. And, um, even this part, and, and there, this is not even the, 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 the part where you need to understand what you're doing, this is just remembering your token, right? Um, so for actually practicing um, online behavior, secure behavior, um, we need some kind of, I, I, I thought that we need some kind of training ground. So, and I was very much inspired by Capture the Flag games, uh, where you have all kinds of challenges, and you need to solve them, and I think we can do the same um, in a playful, gamified manner, also for training secure practices for people. This is pre snowden okay? Um, so the, the thing that we came up with, unfortunately the, the video is missing. Um, I'm working also with Tactical Technology, a German um, NGO that is uh, doing uh, mostly of the training. And um, if you go, what? Ah. Mm -hmm. Ah, often because I'm scanning the net. So 
you are listening on a port, uh, SSL port, and depending on what the SNI host name is, the port gets forwarded to a different uh, local port, basically. So, um, and this is all before anything else, uh, anything happens in, in terms of SSL handshaking. And this allows us, in the third level of the game, to simulate an HTTPS man in the middle attack. Because each player is assigned a unique domain that he has to visit. On the first visit, it gets, the, the player gets a normal, uh, non uh, man in the middle uh, certificate. And in the second visit, uh, after he completed some stuff on this site, um, whenever you come back, there will be a man in the middle intercept uh, because of this port forwarding and identification of the, um, of the uh, distinguished port's name. Uh, and so this, this will be even a training ground for, first of all, detecting a man in the middle attack, because even that is not, um, people just click it away usually. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, and in this case, you don't click it away, but you have to react to that. And, and the other thing that is um, about interesting about this game, since the players in this game are sensible people, like sensible in terms of their security, um, they might be targets of some, some adversaries. This is exactly the kind of uh, project where you don't want to have a user database, where you don't want to track your users. Because if this host gets compromised, it will, might uh, compromise a lot of players that you actually want to protect. So uh, one of the big challenges in this, in this game is actually to track the users in a way that still protects their privacy and makes it non-trackable. Non and, and this is the real challenge of the game, actually coding up the stuff and making up a new mechanism with which you can handle stuff that is easily handled nowadays in e-commerce platforms because they track you. But actually coming up with new methods of of still being able to do things without tracking people is, I think, something extremely exciting and something that should, like, you know, um, maybe be used also in other uh, solutions, um, also e-commerce solutions, where that should be protecting your privacy and not exploiting that. So um, I can tell you, I can finish the, f the first levels of the game in about five minutes. A total noob has a lot of problems, has to install PGP, etc. So um, if you have time and want to try it out, I'm very interested in how long it takes for you to go through all the levels. Uh, not everything is completely um, um, immediately obvious, but it's a bit of a CTF, right? So you need to do some thinking. Um, um, the second level can be accessed after you've completed uh, the first level. But you then have to contact via Java, not Ono. You, you get a Java address for Ono, right? Uh, the second level is uh, available for Ono dash dev uh, at the same host, Java CCCDA. Uh, um, so, first level is Ono at, second level is Ono dash dev. And if anyone completes it and gives me a timing, uh, without embellishing your own uh, uh, success, I'm very interested in how long it takes for people attending this, uh, this event, uh, how long it takes for them. Um, thank you.